Before we get started, I would appreciate if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. So once full adoption and utilization of DLT based payment systems by banks occur for cross-border payments, what do you think is going to happen to the value of these tokens? What do you think is going to happen? It's absolutely insane because once you understand this and where the global financial payment system space is moving toward through the adoption of ISO 20022 messaging standard, you would understand and know that the current prices on the market right now for XRP, let's look at XDC, XDC, what, two pence, insane, XLM, eight pence. So we have XLM at eight pence, XDC at two pence, and XRP at 27p. These prices are insanely low when you understand their utility and dirt cheap. I mean, right now, being able to buy these crypto assets at these prices, 27 pence, two pence, eight pence, is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity because once utility kicks in and once ISO 20022 goes live and once the banks are leveraging DLT based payment systems, RTGS systems, real time growth settlement systems for cross border payments, then you would never see these prices ever again. And that's guaranteed. You won't see these prices this low ever again once adoption and utilization occurs. And if you think that the prices would fall, would come crashing down with Bitcoin or be worth cents again for these crypto assets like XRP, XDC, XLM, then you simply do not understand what's going to happen once utilization of these crypto assets occur. You just don't understand. You still don't grasp the amount of demand there would be from financial institutions for these crypto assets and the amount of value from financial institutions that will be flowing through these DLT based payment systems that would be absorbed by the native tokens of the respective DLT based system. So if it's on Ripple, XRP would absorb it. If it's on the Zinfin network, XDC would be absorbing that value. If it's on the Stellar network, XLM would be absorbing that value. And this would ultimately ensure that the value of these crypto assets increases to much higher prices in the long run. Once utility kicks in, you just see the price continue to go up and up and up and up alongside, dem alongside demand and alongside the um, more utility. The more utility that occurs, the higher the prices. It doesn't matter whether Bitcoin goes up or down, which is a, a speculative asset. These utility-based tokens would separate from the market and the movement of Bitcoin and they would be in a league of its own. XRP, XDC, XLM. Now, those that hold patiently and bought these tokens at these sort of prices and held patiently, understanding the bigger picture with long-term vision, they will be rewarded, God willing. And those that sold early, unfortunately for you guys, sadly, you would be regretful because you just didn't get it. You won't understand why when you saw XRP reach £10 per token and you sold out thinking, oh, it's going to crash back down to 30p again and it didn't happen. What happened? XRP went from £10 to £100 and you're never going to be able to buy that bag again that you had of XRP that you sold for £10 because now you're priced out. It, and it doesn't stop at £100. It goes to £500, £1,000. And at a thousand pound is still at, not at a sufficient price target for institutions to be able to facilitate the amount of value that they want going through XRP per second. So they need around the world. Remember, we're not talking about one country. We're talking about around the world. We're talking about continents in Europe, all the countries that will be using these systems in Africa, in Asia, in, in the um, North South America. And when a thousand price is not enough to facilitate all that demand and value going through the, the, these distributed ledger technologies they have to increase it further so you see xrp going from a thousand pound to eventually ten thousand pound am i talking about today no tomorrow no i'm talking about the long-term vision where would xrp be 10 years from now do you think it's going to be at 27p 
We have ISO 2022 going live in November in for the target zone in November for the Bank of England 2023. By 2025, everyone is going to be using this standard. And then we have from 2016, they're talking about it being interoperable, interoperable with DOT systems. And then we already I already went through the, the banking institutions that are already connected with all these distributed ledger technology companies that are going to be leveraging blockchain technology for cross-border payments and how they are already signing up to join and be ready to join these networks. So think long term. In the long run, once ISO 2022 goes live, that's the that's the gate opening for these banks to start leveraging DLT based systems. Once regulation regulatory clarity becomes clear with the SEC case, remember the SEC case is just for America. The rest of the world has already accepted the fact that XRP is not a security. So the rest of the world they're ready. They're just probably waiting for ISO twenty oh twenty two to be live to make it easier for them to interface with all these distributed ledger technologies. The SEC case is just for America. But once that's done, then banks in America will be able to hop on board as well because there'll be regulatory clarity for them. All I'm saying is the price of these assets, XRP, XDC and XLM, it's going to be very interesting to see where they are five years from now and 10 years from now. Knowing what we know now with ISO going live this year and by 2025 where ISO is going to be across the board live all over the place, it's going to be very interesting to see what these assets and how how low they're going to be. And one thing you have to understand is that I did a video on this. I do recommend you to go and check out my video where I spoke about why XRP has to be a high price. But in that example, I was using XRP. But that same example applies for XDC and XLM. So why XRP can't be cheap once utility kicks in? So here's an example, 100 billion XRP. Imagine XRP, the value of XRP is one pound. So one pound equals one XRP. So the total of all the supplies in the market, 100 billion XRP, that means if someone wants 100 billion worth of value needs to be passed through the ledger, it would require the entire supply to facilitate it, which is not practical. Now, you may think 100 billion is a lot of money, but bearing in mind that SWIFT alone in their messaging transfers sends out five to six trillion dollars of value worth of dollars a day. That's, that's, that's the volume of SWIFT a day. SWIFT does five to six trillion a day. So someone wanting to just do 100 billion, that's not even what a fraction of what SWIFT does a day. An institution wants to send 100 billion and from any of these tokenized assets, or to be honest, to it, or all multiple different ones of them, 100 billion is going to be, wants to be transferred through the XRP ledger, and the price of XRP is one pound. That means in order to do that, that institution would have to literally buy up the whole supply of XRP in order to, to get 100 billion um, across the ledger because they'll need 100 billion worth of XRP and if that is one XRP is 1 billion and it's 100 billion in the market then they'll need every single coin in circulation just to facilitate whatever they want to convert across the ledger now that is not practical and that makes no sense I mean this system would never ever work um, efficiently if XRP is at a low price like one pound a coin so the higher the price the more efficient this system would be so if one xrp now was a hundred thousand pound then that institution in order to send across 100 billion across the ledger would just need one million xrp to do that now if one xrp was worth one million pound then that institution would just need a hundred thousand xrp to move 100 billion across so as you see the higher the value of xrp the less xrp is needed for conversions and also the higher the value the more liquidity in the market
So it makes sense for XRP to function as a cross-border um, instantaneous settlement pl platform providing on-demand liquidity using the XRP as a neutral bridge asset. It, XRP has to be at a high price. At a low price, this system will never work. The higher the price, the more things can pass through it, the volume can be higher and it would work effectively and efficiently and the less XRP um, would be needed by these institutions to, to make their transaction and also the cheaper it would be for them as well. This is why some people actually think that eventually the um, they're going to actually fix the price for XRP. So it's going to be a stable price but it's going to be fixed based upon the needs of these institutions on the market. So some people, could, it could be, imagine it, I mean, I don't even think when you actually consider all these assets and the idea of instantaneous settlement, one to two seconds, how much volume will be going through XRP every single second? It won't, it will be in the trillions. So XRP at one pound is nonsensical. 10 pound is nonsensical. Bearing in mind, I'm talking about once utility kicks in, a hundred pound is nonsensical. A thousand pound, is that even enough? Ten thousand pound, maybe now we're getting into um, five digits. Maybe XRP would be fixed at a certain price. And so people so people believe it'll be fixed at a certain price and it'll be increased based upon the liquidity needs. So imagine XRP is at ten thousand pound and institutions realize that ten thousand pound is not enough for the demand of what they need XRP for and what's going for the chain. So they need to increase the price. So they increase it to £20,000 per XRP. They increase it to £30,000 um, as a stable price for XRP, £40,000, £50,000 as um, a stable price for XRP for them to basically have instantaneous settlement and convert one asset into whatever they want to exchange it for. Yeah, so they, they would like very, very, very likelihood set the price of XRP based upon their demand for it and their need for it. And it won't work at a low price. The only way this system would work efficiently is XRP has to be at a high price. And this is only when utility kicks in. Now, speculation is driving the price of XRP. But once utility kicks in, XRP would only, it's only designed to go up. You would never see XRP going down once utility kicks in because you just find more adoption, more usage um, for XRP as more things become tokenized, as more institutions realize on-demand liquidity is very useful and beneficial for them. And once that happens, the price would go up. You won't see XRP falling down anymore from speculation. It doesn't matter what Bitcoin does or whatever, whatever coin in the market does, XRP, XRP would be a token where its value is derived from utility. And what it's being used for is something that is unique, converting one thing into another instantaneously on demand, known as on-demand liquidity. So yeah, the price of XRP could be one day £30,000 a coin, and that won't be insane when you understand the sort of value that's going to be going through its block blockchain potentially. And the value is not going to be in the millions, it's probably going to be in the quadrillions. These crypto assets have to be at a high price in order for them to do their job efficiently, in order for them to be a bridge currency for financial institutions, in order for them to do this efficiently and effectively, these assets have to be at a high price. It would not work if XRP is at 20p, XDC is at 2 pence, XLM is at 8 pence, or if they were all £1 each, it would still not work. In order for them to do what they're going to do, to have thousands of transactions per second going through their um, their ledgers, they have to be at a high price. And that's all I'm going to say on that. If you have any questions, then please feel free to leave me a comment below the video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so as to not miss my next video. Take care and goodbye.